Okay, this is really good. Is the New Testament canon authoritative or is it authoritarian? Recently, the Bible has come under attack by liberal scholars who claim that the New Testament canon was determined by the winners of a supposed struggle for dominance in the early centuries of Christianity. Bart Ehrman, for example, contends in Las Christianidades, I can't say that word, Christianides, Christian ideas, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, but I don't know how to say that word. So um, anyway, Bart Ehrman, for example, contends in his book that many forms of Christianity existed, but one form of Christianity decided what was the correct Christian perspective. It decided who could exercise authority over Christian belief and practice, and it determined what forms of Christianity would be marginalized, set aside, and destroyed. It also decided which books to canonize into scripture and which books to set aside as heretical, teaching false doctrine. As the following evidence reveals, however, the canon is not arbitrary or authoritarian, but is divinely authoritative. First, the entire New Testament canon was recorded early and thus was not subject to legendary contamination. Had any part of the canon be composed after 70 AD, it would most certainly have mentioned the destruction of the very temple that had given the ancient Jews their theological and sociological identity. Additionally, because Matthew and Luke likely most, most likely used Mark as a source and Luke composed his gospel prior to the writing of Acts, which was completed prior to Paul's martyrdom in the mid-60s, Mark may have composed as early as the uh, AD 40s, just a few years after the events recorded. Moreover, in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul reiterates a Christian creed that can be traced to within three to eight years of Christ's crucifixion. Did you hear that? Paul reiterates a Christian creed that can be traced to within three to eight years of Christ's crucifixion. By contrast, the agnostic gospels, including the gospel of Thomas and the gospel of Judas, are dated long after the close of the first century. Furthermore, the authority of the New Testament is confirmed through the eyewitnesses credentials of its authors. John writes, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, that this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The word of life means Jesus. That's what it's giving reference to. And that is in 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. Likewise, Peter reminded his, uh, his readers that the disciples did not follow cleverly invented stories, but were eyewitnesses of Jesus' majesty. Let me repeat that. Likewise, Peter reminded his readers that the disciples did not follow cleverly invented stories, but were eyewitnesses of Jesus' majesty. 2 Peter 1.16 Moreover, the New Testament contains embarrassing details that no authoritarian association bent on dogmatic dominance would have adopted. For instance, the Gospels present the founding members of the movement as dissident disciples who not only doubted, but denied their master. Finally, extra-biblical evidence confirms the New Testament canon and knows nothing of early competing canons. Ancient secular historians from the 1st and 2nd centuries confirm the many events, people, places, and customs chronicled in the New Testament. Early church leaders, all writing before 250 AD, also shed light on New Testament historical accuracy. From such sources, we can piece together the highlights of the life of Christ independent of the New Testament canon. Moreover, 
Eusebius of Caesarea acknowledged the centrality of the can canonical Gospels and recorded their widespread use in important Christian centers, including Jerusalem, Antioch, Alexandria, and Rome. As such, the canon was not determined by men, but discovered by the community of early believers based on principles of canonicity. Luke 1, 1 through 2 says, Many have undertaken to draw up an account for of the kings that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. You're free to comment, and I welcome comments. Just please don't use foul language, and Please be polite and considerate when leaving comments for me or for other people. That's all I ask. Thank you very much for listening to this video, and I sure hope that it answers some of your questions and that it helps you guys. Thanks a lot, and check out my other videos, too. Thanks again. Bye.